Hi, for this video what I want to do is talk to you about law of signs, the ambiguous case. Remember that the ambiguous case is when you are given a side, a side, and a non-included angle. This is one of those that does not prove triangle congruency in geometry. Okay, and the reason is, is because when you are given two sides in an angle, there are three situations that can happen. You can either end up with a triangle that doesn't work at all or measurements that will not create a triangle. You could end up with just one triangle that works, or it is also possible that you could end up with two triangles that would work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to label my triangle that I have drawn out as ABC. It doesn't matter how you draw it, it just matters how you label it. Angle B is 76 degrees. Side B must go opposite of that, and this side equals 20. And then side A is opposite of big A, or angle A, and that would be 18. For this, what we're going to do is we're going to solve for all of the missing information. So we are going to solve for side C, we are going to find angle A, and we are going to find angle C. All right, to find angle A, this is the one that I'm going to start with because of the fact that I know the opposite side. And remember with this one, when you are given a side, a side, and a non-included angle, that there are three situations, again, that could happen. So you have to be very careful with this. So I'm going to say that sine of A over the opposite side, 18, is equal to sine of B, which is 76 degrees, over the opposite side, which is 20. So if you recall, law of sine says that sine A over A is equal to sine B over little b, which is equal to sine of angle C over little c. All right, so since we are finding angle A, what we want to do is the first thing that we want to do is move the 18 over to the other side by multiplying. I'm going to just do this all at once just to kind of make this shorter. Um, since I'm finding an angle measure, that means that I'm going to do the inverse sine of my value. I would take the 18 times sine 76 and divide it by 20. So I can go directly into my answer. It is possible when I plug this in, if this part right here is greater than 1, the calculator will give you a domain error and say that it is not allowable. So in order to do this, let's grab our calculator and see what happens. The first thing that you want to do is make sure that you are in degree mode and not radian mode. So I'm already in degree mode. If you are not, you would just arrow down until you highlight on the degree and hit enter. And I'm going to hit second and mode will get me out of that screen. And now all I have to do is type in my information. So because I want the inverse sine, I'm going to hit second and sine and then 18 sine 76. Make sure you close the parenthesis behind the sine 76 so that it knows that you are only doing the sine of 76 degrees. If you put the division sign without closing that parenthesis, it will give you the wrong answer divided by 20. So I simply just put the entire thing in. It is best to do it this way because if you try to round um, before plugging it in, you are going to get a not as precise answer. And if you're using an online homework platform, it will be counted as wrong because it will be different enough. So when I hit enter, I get 60.84 degrees. So A is approximately 60.84 degrees, and you would just round to whatever place you were told to round to. There's no exact answer every single time it's got to be this way because it depends on the situation. At this point, we're going to check to see if there's only one triangle that can be formed or is it possible for a second triangle to be formed. So I'm basically asking myself, can I have a second triangle? And the way that I see if there is a second triangle is remember that the sine of this angle and the sine of the supplement are equal to each other. So I want to find the supplement of angle A. 
So I'm going to do 180 minus 60.84, and I get 119.16. So I want to see, can I form another triangle that has an angle of measure 119.6 with the given angle measure that we already have? So if I add these two together and they have a sum that is less than 180 degrees, then I can have a second triangle. If it's greater than 180 degrees, then I cannot have a second triangle. So when I add these two together, I get 195.16 degrees, which is greater than 180, so there is not a second triangle. So we can only form one triangle with this one, and that's when angle A is 60.84 degrees. So this angle right here is 60.8. All right, so now what we want to do are find the two C's. We want to start by finding angle C. So angle C, remember the sum of the triangles all add up to be 180 degrees, can be found by doing 180 minus the sum of 76 and 60.8. So if I solve this, you can just plug this directly into your calculator as is 180 minus 76 plus 60. 0.84, and we get 43.16. And I did go another place that I had over here since I had the 84 written over here. I'm going to go ahead and do that again. Um, so angle C is approximately 43.16 degrees. So now that I know the angle, I can find the opposite side by using the law of sines again. Okay, when I use the law of sines this time, because I am trying to find this side measurement, I'm going to put the variable on top and then do the sine of the 43.16 on the bottom. It doesn't matter what order you put it in. Over here, because I was finding A, I put sine A on top. Since I was finding an angle measure, that's the rule that I tend to lean towards, but it really doesn't matter. You can set it up either way and you'll get the same answer every time. All right, I'm going to use the given relationship, the same one that we used here, the sine of 76 over 20. Since we were given both angle B and the side opposite to start with, that's going to be the best ratio to use to find the missing information. You could use the other information that you found, but because we rounded, it's not going to be as precise. So now what I want to do is find C, and to do that, and I was inconsistent. I looked at the one that I did. See, I made a mistake that a lot of students make. They set it up. That is incorrect. It is okay to set it up as either the side over the sign or the sign over side as long as you stay consistent with both of them. So I stopped paying attention for a second. Let me switch that. It should be 20. Sorry, my pen doesn't want to go back. 20 over the sine of 76. I have to make sure that I set it up the correct way because of how I set it up over here. So that was a good thing to show you what not to do. All right, so now to simplify, all we would have to do is do 20 sine 43.16 divided by sine of 76. Okay, so grab our calculator, let's go ahead and plug that in, and I would just say 20 times the sine of 43.16 divided by the sine of 76. Make sure you close your parentheses behind your sign so that your calculator doesn't find the sign of the wrong thing. And we end up with 14.099 six, or in this case, it would be easiest just to round it to 14.10. So we're going to say that C is approximately 14.10. So we have solved this triangle. We have found all three missing items. We found angle A is approximately 60.84 degrees. Angle C is approximately 43.16 
um, degrees and side C is 14.10. Make sure that you remember that the largest side is always across from the largest angle. The shortest side is always across from the smallest angle. So we found that side C is the shortest because it's opposite of the smallest angle, 43.16 degrees. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.